106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. Dr. Bones, Dr. Bones, Dr. Bones. Doctor Bones, Doctor Bones, Doctor Bones, Doctor Bones. Right on, and welcome to New Music Saturday. Today, uh, again, a special guest co-host is Dave from Grasscutter. Welcome back, Dave. Well, pleasure, as always, Doug. And tonight, our special musical guest will be premiering his brand new song on our show and my show, and it won't be uh, aired to the public till tomorrow. So welcome, Jeff, who is Recite the Plan. Good evening. So, Jeff, like, welcome to the show, man, and thank you so much for uh, choosing, the, uh, choosing my show to premiere a new song. Thank you, man. So I've been playing your songs over the past uh, probably about two, two and a half months, and they've been kind of been jumping around from your past EPs. And I've noticed a gradual change in, in song structure and just, just uh, kind of formatting. Now, my question to you is, like, how do you feel that you've grown in the past, uh, well, al- almost 10 years? Because I think you got one that goes back as far as 2006. Uh, 2004, I think, was the first Recite the Plan EP. Well, there, there you go. So, I mean, that that's a that's a lot of years. So, how how do you feel like you've grown and kind of made differences along the way? Well, production wise, it's probably the biggest thing. You know, just learning how to, uh, you know, track it all by yourself and, and mix it and things like that, where you don't have a big budget. It's pretty tough. <laughs> well, yeah, no kidding. Um, but musically, well, let's start off with this. Let's let's go with this first. Um, I mean, everybody uh, has influences, obviously, and they kind of can kind of mix and change over the years. Now, from from the start up until now, have they changed that much for you? Or do you have like a like a kind of a couple go tos? Yeah, I would say influences change over time. Um, I wasn't as big into say Nirvana when I was younger, just right. because it was so popular. You know, I was more into like replacements, Dinosaur Jr., bands like that. But then, you know, as the years go by, you see what Nirvana did for music at the time, and you really respect you respect it a lot more. At least I learned to respect it a lot more. And I thought that you know that punk rock, you know, that real kind of punk rock, was missing from the mainstream. Uh, so I, that definitely got to be more of it's sort of why I recite the plan came to be, I guess, because I started out in the early or mid to late nineties doing more new metal, metal type stuff. So, sort of evolved into more of a grunge thing as time went on. Well, no, I can see it, but new new metal. Well, let's okay, let's pick on that just for one moment here. So, new metal, new metal, as in like. Corn, the biscuit, that sort of thing, or just a kind of a, a wider variation of that. Well, I wouldn't consider Limp Biscuit to be new metal. That's... No, I'm just I'm just saying that because that's the way that they're categorized. I'm not saying I, I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm just saying that, that that's the genre they're they're topped into. Yeah. Um, well, I was into Corn, the first Corn album. I was right. That was sort of what happened after grunge ended. I was still in high school, so uh, I had a new metal band in '97, and we were into the first Corn album, and 
Deftones and Spawn Shank and, you know, bands like that. And then, um, you know, that's sort of where my songwriting started, I guess you could say. You know, the new metal stuff. You know, with, with Deftones, I will never forget, I don't know why, but I will never forget the first time I heard Deftones. And it was a, it was the album Adrenaline. And Seven right. Words Seven Words was the first song I heard. It's like, man, yep, what? Me too. I, at first, I thought, it's like, is this, at first, because with the opening thing, I thought it was, I thought it was Rage. It's like, this isn't Rage, but that, that's, that's tripped out, man. And Well, there, there used to be a magazine called CMJ, and they had a CD that came, you know, back when you, pre-internet when you oh, yeah. read magazines and and uh, it had seven days on it that was where i first heard uh the deftones and i went out immediately bought it all my friends were into like pantera at the time and right. stuff like that I, I really liked the melodic aspects of the deftones a lot more because like i said you know i was into dinosaur jr and mm. replacements and i was always sort of more into the melodic stuff right well, I guess I kind of jumped back and forth, but I remember too, um, some of their, touching on seven words again, um, I lived in Michigan for about six years, and when I was in high school there, I did the high school radio station, and uh, I thought I had put in the edited version of seven words, but <laughs> I, I was wrong, because I'm sitting there with the headphones on, I'm listening, it's like, uh-oh. <laughs> Yeah, it gets a little rough in the middle. There. Yeah, exactly. So I kind of dropped the volume and <laughs> did a quick cutout and, and apologized for technical technical errors. Like, oh man, because you know, all he's like, he's like, after he says, you know, squeal like a pig, squeal, pig, yeah. pig, f and like, uh oh, yeah. It's like yeah. dropped the volume was down like instantly and like right back on. It's like, oh man, I'm so sorry for that. Because then I looked after, I was like, oh man, the seeds look exactly the same because I had the original and then I had the edited version for radio play. It's like, oh man, pop the one run in the display. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's embarrassing, I guess, you know. Well, I, it, it was, but luckily I didn't catch any grief for it. So thankfully it was like it was kind of middle of the afternoon, so not too many people caught it. If anybody really I mean a lot of times now we're so used to it that we kind of almost uh, it's it's uh not we don't tune it out, but you know, we've uh, become like almost immune to it that just you don't even realize anymore, right? I had a similar experience. Uh I had a college radio show. I wasn't in college, but a friend of mine had the radio show and I was more into new music than he was. So he had me help him with it. Right. And there was a therapy song off of uh, infernal love that had an F bomb in it. And I would have to like press the mute button and then unpress the mute button during play. Cause there wasn't an unedited version. And then later on he had a show on a bigger radio station and they had me come in and do a new music show. And they actually fired me from that show for i wasn't getting paid but they dismissed me from being on there because i played um bomb track oh and no way. Uh, and they they called they called and told me not to play it and i said well this is what's hot this is well yeah you know, this is what people want to hear and i played it anyway being you know 19 or whatever and they politely asked me not to come back so see, that was the end of my radio career see that's why i can't figure out why um um what's it called Killing the killing the name of was it killing the name was ever released as a single? Because really, you mean the last part of the song? You know, it's a lot of f bombs in a row, but it's essentially the most powerful part of the song. You know, you're kind of yeah. Well, well, back in those days, the those sort of songs were the mainstream. That's sort of what Nirvana did for the mainstream at that time period right. was to bring the harder edge stuff, you know, into the mainstream. Whereas now it's sort of gone no fair enough Dave did you have a few questions um I would, to be fair I haven't heard any of the, the guys music yet I think Mubby's heard one track did you play one last week yep uh, I was, <laughs> was probably wasted last week I can't even remember the track I need to hear some music so I'll, I'll have some questions later on you've been very helpful Dave thank you <laughs> <laughs> oh, <a> yeah <laughs> So, uh, Jeff, before I get some more questions, uh, let's uh, kick off with some music here, and I'll let you cue this up, because this is uh, the brand new single uh, to your brand new EP that's coming out, so go for it. This is a song called Sellout, off of my LP called Sellout, that should be out in its entirety sometime early next year. So here we go, brand new world premiere of Recite the Plan song, Sellout. Dig this.
Right on. That was Sellout by Reset the Plan of his new LP, which will come out next year. Now, I like this one um, just because it was heavy hitting uh, right at the beginning. And I like the, the, the fact with a little kind of like uh, uh, speaking intro on the telephone. And I want to uh, relate back here because since we're talking about the 90s and a lot of this is kind of attributed to it. Over the past two or three weeks, I've been pulling out a lot of old like 90s albums, like stuff that since Jeff, you, Prince, you and I are the same age, you know, stuff we grew up with. And Dave, I know you're pretty close, but we'll all go into that. So, huh. so our so our high school days was like, you no, know, Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Rage Against the Machine, Alice in Chains, all that, all all those guys. And uh, you now, one thing it reminded me of is uh, some of the the recording, the kind of.